word of God says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. There is reason to rejoice. I'm alive and I give God praise and thanks. And there is a privilege to share with you again from his word. And I trust that morning after morning that your hearts have been encouraged and that you are following these devotions because they are connected. And uh, you can go back and listen to number one all the way until you come to this one. And then I'm going to continue until I would show you exactly what I've seen from the word of God in regards to this matter of a saved soul, a Christian who lived on earth and whose life was not very useful for the Lord. J.W. Farrell, he wrote the song, A Soul Winner for Christ. He said, I want to be a soul winner for Jesus every day. He does so much for me. I want to aid the lost sinner to leave his erring way and be from bondage free. A soul winner for Jesus, a soul winner for Jesus. Oh, let me be each day a soul winner for Jesus. A soul winner for Jesus. He's done so much for me. I trust that you too want to be a soul winner for the Lord Jesus Christ. He that winneth souls is wise. We are working for one word. You know, many people work for pay and they look for increase. Some work for prestige and, you know, where people would look up to them. I've been this, so I've been that. All I want to be is a servant of the Lord. And uh, those of us who are servants of the Lord, we are working for two words. Well done. And if I could only hear my Savior say, well done, at the end of my journey, I would be happy. That's why morning after morning, I take the time and I share with you these devotions and I ask you to share these devotions with a friend or a family member. You can never tell just by sharing these devotions, what God can do. You and I may not get the opportunity to go into every home and talk to everybody, but you know, the world is very small today. We can share these devotions or we can share other devotions where people could understand. So if you have been blessed by these devotions, I ask you to share with a family member and a friend. That's why I share with you, because you are so important to me. Not only share, I make it my business to prepare these devotions so that your heart will be blessed. So we're looking at this man, Lot, our brother Lot. He was a righteous man, just man. We noticed that he lived by sight and not by faith. And then we noticed that he chose to make Sodom his home. Well, let's go a little deeper this morning and see he soon became out of touch with God. You know, to backslide is not something that one just gets up and say, you know, I don't know this. No, it's a gradual thing. And we could see it in Lot's life. He soon became out of touch with God. The first thing I've noticed is that he lost the consciousness of the presence of God. You know, when you lose the consciousness of the presence of God, then you would have also lost your fear for God. And when you would have lost your fear for God, you can't tell what you will see. You can't tell what you will do. How could I say that he lost the consciousness of the presence of God? For in Genesis chapter 13, verse 14, the Bible says, The Lord said unto Abraham, After that Lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art northward, and southward, and eastward, and westward. Now, there is a word we must notice, and the word is after. Notice, and the Lord said unto Abraham, after that lot was separated on them. Notice when God speaks, uh, when he spoke, he spoke to Abraham after lot. All that we are about to pay attention to now, this happened after Lot was separated from his godly uncle Abraham. It was his godly uncle Abraham who took him with him. Now, 
Ask the man Job how one feels when the consciousness of his presence is gone. Listen to his words in Job chapter 23, verse 1 to 3. Then Job answered and said, Even today is my complaint bitter. My stroke is heavier than my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. I want you to just think of these words. He says, Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. Wow. Here is a man that is acknowledging that he does not have the presence of God with him and he wished that he would know where he could find him. And when the presence of God is away from you, oh, what a bad feeling it is. I have heard persons praying and they would stop praying and, and they would say, Lord, I know that you are not listening to me. They would tell you, I'm just saying words I can feel the presence of God is not with me. And Lot lost the consciousness of the presence of God. Not only that he lost that, he lost the peace of God that he once experienced. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 6 to 9, here's what the Bible says. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just Lot, watch this, vexed with the filter conversation of the wicked. Here it is. He is down there among these people, and now even the peace of God he lost. Why? He says, for that righteous man dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing, vex his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Whatever they were doing, Lot became so vexed with them with their unlawful deeds. Verse 9 says, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust in the day of judgment to punishment. What a challenging verse of scripture to listen to. We are told that the wickedness of the Sodomites after a while distressed the soul of Lot. His conscience was troubled and began to deal with him. Isaiah 57 verse 20 and verse number 21, he says, But the wicked are like a troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. Verse 21 says, There is no peace, saith my God. To the wicked. I don't know about you. It is a terrible thing to live a life where there is no peace. Mm. You can take a lot of things from me, but please don't take God's peace away from me. That's why Paul reminds the Philippian believers, he says, be careful for nothing, but by everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And he says, when you do that, and the peace of God that passeth all understanding shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Lot was unconcerned about making his request known unto God because he saw all that he wanted and he got what he saw. But the Bible says, when we walk by faith and not by sight, wow, we will have the peace of God. He could not experience peace when he was wrapped up in himself. How is it with you this morning as a child of God? Are you experiencing the peace of God? The places that you go, are you happy there? Are you happy going there? When you are there, the people that you are with, do you feel comfortable there as a child of God? If you are not, then you know that's not a place where you're supposed to be. Remember, the Holy Spirit of God dwells within us. And wherever we go, we take the Holy Spirit of God with us if we are children of God. And it says, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby we are sealed unto the day of redemption. What am I trying to say to you morning after morning? Make sure that your life is counting for the Lord. Make sure that you are doing daily something that will bring honor and glory to God. Yes, don't just be a, a Christian. 
Don't just be safe. Make sure that you are also walking for him now that you are saved. Not to be saved, but that you are saved. Father, thank you so much again for another morning, another privilege to share the word. Bless it to the heart of every listener. Meet all of their needs today. There are those, Lord, who are calling upon you right now. Hear their prayer. There are those who are crying out to you for forgiveness. Forgive their God. There are those that you are speaking to, continue to speak to. There are those that you are calling, you, you are seeking for men. May they say yes, dear God. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being able to serve you. Have your way with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Remember, God loves you, and so do I. One other thing I want you to remember, please share with a family member or a friend. God bless you. Stay safe. Have a great day.